commend Stuart, Sheriff Mack, and everybody else who showed up in Nevada. And what we witnessed there in Nevada was a miracle. And uh, it is in large part because of what you gentlemen did, that they were not able to haul Clive and Bundy out. The intent was to haul him out in a body bag or in leg chains. And, uh, and any other protester that was there. It, it sends chills up the back of my neck to hear you talk about it. It was an amazing day. My family uh, was in a very similar situation as the Mondays in 1991. We start, my father and mother bought a ranch in central Nevada, Pine Creek Ranch, in 1978. And from that point forward, when Pre President Carter was president, the problems with the federal agencies never stopped. And it finally culminated in a situation where they conducted a raid on our ranch. We had a, a Forest Service personnel who was under uh, deposition who testified that he had had a, a sniper rifle sighted in on my 16-year-old brother on that raid. And ultimately, my family was forced to go into uh, the federal courts and file a Fifth Amendment constitutional takings case against the Forest Service and BLM for taking our ranch. And that court battle still is, is ongoing. Um, we have had three major court cases in federal courts and also a water adjudication just to defend what we were lawfully allowed to do in the first place. We have over three truckloads, as I like to say, or over hun several hundred file boxes of court documents just to defend what we were lawfully allowed to do in the first place. Our ranch is situated in very, very similar to the Bundy Ranch. There's a lot of confusion over this, this issue. It has about 7,000 acres of uh, deeded land, and the rest, about 750,000 acres, is rangeland, whereon we have vested water rights, rights of ways, ditch rights, uh, fences and roads, and own those rights and have owned those rights since the 1860s when they were first appropriated by our predecessors and in interests. That's the same exact situation as the Bundy Ranch. So when the government comes out and says, oh, we're just protecting public land, well, there's a lot of private rights on, those, uh, on that public land, a lot of which is the water rights. And when you live that close to Clark County, you can't imagine why they might want his ranch. Um, they have been successful in running out 52 other ranchers in Clark County on alleged uh, purposes such as the desert tortoise. Of course, we all know it's a, it's a red herring argument. It's a Trojan horse. Um, it didn't take them about, 16, or about six years from when they broke those 52 other ranchers to start selling land in Las Vegas like hotcakes. This is the BLM. And uh, all of a sudden, they were no longer concerned about the effect of uh, excavating equipment and paving equipment on desert tortoise habitat. So we all know that this is a red herring argument and that they were, there was something there on that ranch that they wanted. And Harry Reid is very closely tied to this situation, don't kid yourself. And that they brought in 200 snipers to surround him and, uh, and do basically a land clearance and hopefully haul him out in a body bag. So when you, Stuart, talk about what happened down there, it was truly a miracle. Now, I want to um, address the subject in our case with respect to where we've gone. You know, a lot of people have uh, thought that Cliven was legally on a way out on the limb. He had very bad legal advice. Um, he should never have had those two court orders against him in the first place, in my opinion. But nonetheless, um, the worst we could accuse him of is either civil protest or contempt of court. But in our case, our case is very similar. Uh, we were filed with trespass charges in 2007. And they came ag against my brother and, my, um, and the estate uh, to seek, seek trespass charges against us. They had racked up a heck of a bill on us. Of course, it's all fictitious. The government and the Justice Department does amazing things with bills. But anyway, um, we ultimately prevailed in that case. We were able to be, uh, our property rights were recognized our vested water rights were recognized by the court, our rights of ways and all of the other issues, our forage rights. Hey, ben, can you turn the sound off? That's distracting from what she's saying. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We're just trying to fix it for the, for the street, my fault. And ultimately, um, the court f recognized those property rights in the Federal District Court of Nevada and ruled that the federal government had engaged in a conspiracy beginning in the 1970s to deprive my family of their property rights. 
He ruled that he found, or he found evidence during the course of the trial of racketeering, of fraud, mail fraud, wire fraud. He held the Forest Service uh, ranger and the BLM manager in contempt of court for witness intimidation during the pendency of the trial and the court uh, the tr of the court process. He told them to show up with their own checkbook to pay for the um, to pay for the damages that they had caused my brother. They had sent biz people whom my brother had done business with had sent them to collections, sent their wives to collections, had charged assess uh, trespass fines against not only my brother but a number of people he did business with. And, uh, and so that was considered part of the contemptuous actions on the part of the federal government. So when I talk about our case and the Bundy case, our case was very similar in this respect. The government has been in a conspiracy to drive the Western rancher off these rangelands. And the Western rancher is not a mere lessee. He has property rights out there. And that's the dirty little secret, in particular the water rights. So. What we see here today with Cliven is, and with what happened down there is so important in the defense of our property rights, in the defense of our freedom and liberty. I want to address the issue of police power very quickly with regard to the federal government. There is a misnomer that the BLM, Forest Service, and most of the other federal agencies have any kind of police power whatsoever, especially on federal lands. They have no police power on federal lands. Every land law passed by Congress from the Taylor Grazing Act to the Federal Land Policy and Management Act all have reserved civil and criminal jurisdictions to the states. The BLM had no business out there with guns and badges. They could have easily have packed guns to protect themselves from a rattlesnake, but they had no business pointing guns at individuals. And the fact that Sheriff Gillespie completely went and hid under his desk down there and turned over the entire law enforcement action to the BLM was a travesty of the highest order. And if tarring and feathering was still allowed, that man should have been personally tarred and feathered for what he did down there. So I thank you guys for showing up. I called, my brother was down there during the course of this, and I was sending out emails, basically, trying to handle the press side of it on, from, from our perspective in Nevada. Um, so I stayed in Reno, and I kept saying, what about this militia? Because the press had hyped it up. What, and he goes, oh, no. He goes, we feel a lot safer because those guys were there. Um, this was a spontaneous reaction that we had down there. This was not something where people were ginned up to show up and support Clive and Bundy. People showed up only after they saw people getting tasered, only after they saw Clive and Bundy's son arrested for standing on the side of a road filming the actions of the government exercising his First Amendment rights. This was a natural uh, protest. And I am so impressed with what those people were able to do. The courage of people who had nothing to do with Clive and Benny, didn't know him, and had the courage to stand down there and possibly take a bullet. And what we witnessed in Southern Nevada was a true miracle. And I want to thank you guys for what you did. Thank you. This is former Sheriff Richard Mack. Thank you so much for watching these timely speakers documenting solutions for modern day heroes. This movement cannot be successful without the support of the American people. That's where you come in. These conference videos prove that the work we are doing is absolutely making a difference. It is the solution. Donate today at CSPOA.org. Become a member of the CSPOA and strengthen our voice and stand with us for peace and liberty.